Good afternoon, everyone. It is official. 2016, not the warmest year ever. Tied with 1998, indiscernible from the two years. More NOAA data tampering. Climate Central, the rah-rah global warming squad, saying it's an overwhelmingly hot year. NOAA with the highest temperatures of all when we compare data. University of Maine Climate Change Institute also showing downward temperatures all of 2016. Antarctic downward trend. Comparison of 2015-16 northern hemisphere snow cover. And the magic warming ocean. Within one month, the entire planet's oceans have warmed more than a degree Celsius. And please remember to subscribe to ADAPT 2030. First week of December, we now have the lower tropospheric temperatures in and counted. 2016 is not the warmest year ever, tying with 1998 statistically indistinguishable from that year. A lot of people talking about lower tropospheric temperatures. It is on an increase at three tenths of a degree above baseline since the 1979 satellite era has begun. But when we look at the lower stratospheric temperatures, which nobody talks about, on the decline. Headline, 100% of US warming due to NOAA data tampering. And then Climate Central, Brian Kahn, what you wrote is false news. The US has not been overwhelmingly hot this year. If it were, it would have broken the old records. Also, I'm gonna to present to you data points that run contrary to what you wrote in this article here. NOAA consistently pushing one and a half to two degrees Fahrenheit above every other temperature measurement out there. And you wonder how is that possible? Unless there's an agenda behind it. When we look at these overlapping eight different data sets of the lower tropospheric temperatures globally, wide out here for you, how is that that two of those are still spinning northward when everything else is going down in temperature? And when we look at University of Maine Climate Change Institute over the year of 2016 into the first week 2017, downtrend. Looking in Antarctica as well, downtrend in temperatures since 1979. And overlaying all the different data sets from the tropics to the North Pole down to Antarctica, mid-latitudes, northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, we get this wave pattern. And I'll ask you to stop the frame for a moment and look into this. Do you see anything out of the ordinary jumping far above the statistical average of loss or gain? And also with these headlines of the U.S. being the warmest ever, how is that possible when the average number of days over 95 degrees Fahrenheit was more than double back in the 1930s than it is presently? A bit wider out here for you. 4.4 days is the average. In the 1930s, 9.8 days. And if we take a look at the June, July, August Corn Belt models, how is that NOAA red line running literally 2.7 degrees warmer than the observed temperatures at 3 tenths of a degree above baseline? And this is a personal message to Donald Trump, President Trump. Please clean house on NOAA. They have been putting out manipulated data, changing temperatures to suit an agenda that was put in place by the previous administration to coddle to the IPCC. I am asking you, as a citizen of the country, to please get in there and get those people out who are putting out the false data so we can get back to the real temperatures. Because we are entering this grand solar minimum and our country along with the rest of the countries across this planet, are going to need to get ready to mitigate this and start putting into play different food growing strategies as our current growing zones are pushed further south. All of this manipulated data is masking this event that comes back every 400 years. I implore you, please, as one of the first things that you do in your new administration, put some real reliable people in there and set those temperature sets back to what they were with the original data so we can get an actual gauge on how this climate has been changing and where we're going from here. 
Now with that said, viewer of mine sent in this screen grab from Conabe. I didn't know that the Brazilian corn stocks ended down 62%. That's a gargantuan drop. And let's start comparing snow data. Monthly snow December 2015 to monthly snow December 2016. If you pause the screen, look around Eastern Europe, the border with Canada and North America and the United States there, and also over into Eurasia, pushing further south into China and Mongolia. You notice more gains in those areas here in the 2016 right slide. And for being the warmest year ever, 2016 back in November, December, still ranked second for the most snow cover across the Northern Hemisphere. And when we talk about magic coloring book sets here, this is December 5th, 2016, Tropical Tidbits, Surface Anomaly Temperatures for the Global Oceans. The gradient is about two degrees Celsius or so, anything that's in the blue up to about half a degree Celsius cooler than normal. And then magically, four weeks later, everything has flipped over a degree Celsius above normal temperatures. So that means a better part of the entire Earth's oceans have flipped two degrees Celsius in the matter of a month. I can't believe that. Case in point, when we look at Climate Realizer, this is just a week and a half ago, it still shows sort of the same temperatures that you saw in that December slide. Now what was the cause of them to go so hot on this? There's definitely a problem with the temperatures showing on this map. Staying with ocean temperatures and looking at the La Niñas and El Niños since 1979 up to January right now, we still have a bit further down to cool. So expect the spring to be cooler as this La Niña continues to cool and intensify. An overlap of the 1997 El Niño with the 2015-16 El Niño, which was a bit more intense, but they're dropping lock steps. So... If it does continue out, there's still another half a degree Celsius or more drop in temperature still to come, which will affect temperatures coming up in March and April. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. And I hope for the sake of all of us that we get the real temperature data so we can start planning how to minimize the effects of this grand solar minimum that have changed society across this planet for the last 8,000 years every time this occurs.